Hello, my name is Darren McBride. I'm one of the project leads for Highly Reliable Systems. Today I'd like to introduce you to the 8Bay NetSwap Plus. This is a network attached storage device with eight removable drive modules. It was purpose built for backup and works with any backup software. When people see this product, they often assume that it's a typical network attached storage device in which the individual drives can be combined into a single array. Actually, that's not the case, and it's by design. The way it's set up, the backup jobs can be sent to each individual drive separately. For example, each day of the week could have its own drive, or each server could have its own drive. In addition, you can use mirroring between the drive pairs, creating up to four mirrored sets. The real differentiator of this product is, of course, the removable drives. Each of these removable drives house up to a four terabyte hard drive, completely enclosed in an aluminum tray and each aluminum tray has a connector on the back that is rated for thousands of plug and unplug cycles. This is the fastest way to do backup in your store. We love the cloud and this system can be used to replicate to the cloud. However, sometimes you simply don't have the bandwidth or you don't have the time available to replicate things over the cloud. This NAS box, in addition to having eight removable drives, boots off of an SSD drive that's front accessible. This allows us, if there's ever any problem, to pull that SSD drive, insert a new one, and the system boots right back up. You'll also notice that there's a USB drive key. The USB key allows you to recover the operating system should there be a problem with the network attached storage device. Let's talk about mirroring in a little more detail. With mirroring turned on, neither your server nor your backup software have to be aware when you do drive swaps. What you typically do is designate one drive as your primary, the second drive as your secondary drive that you're going to swap, say, nightly. When you swap in this second drive, the volume never drops offline, which means that you can use software that normally wouldn't work with drive swaps. To configure the NetSwap Plus, we use a standard browser. In this case, I'm going to use Firefox, and I'm going to simply go to the IP address that the NetSwap Plus is located on. In this case, it's 192.168.1.50. I have to put in a username of HR admin and a password of password, which are the defaults for this system. At this point, the menu for the NetSwap Plus comes up. And the first thing I want you to notice is that there are a total of eight disks. So each of these volumes show up separately as we expected. In this case, our demo has two terabyte drives in each of the drive bays. I want to show you how mirroring is set up. And the way we do that is we choose the disks menu. And under the disks menu, you'll see that we have the ability to come down and create mirror sets. So I'm going to create a mirror set and I'm going to choose disk 1 and make it the master and disk 2 which you'll notice is down here and make it the secondary drive. I'm also going to tell it to assume clean. This is a little trick where the mirror set can be created in a matter of seconds instead of having to actually copy the blocks from disk 1 to disk 2. So when I click on the create button you'll notice that the mirror set establishes fairly quickly The mirror disk is now created, and from the main disk interface, you'll see that in addition to the eight physical drives, we now have what I call a virtual drive or a pretend mirror set called mirror disk zero. And that mirror disk is active. And we can go in and share it as a volume on our uh, network attached storage device, or we can hook it up iSCSI. Similarly, we can run through and do uh, a mirror set for disk three and four. So I'm going to pick three, make it the master, disk four, create a set, confirm that. And one difference you may see between the second pair of mirrors is that uh, that mirror has not been formatted yet. So let's take a look at the way that is on the interface. You see that the first one, because it had been previously established and I'd formatted it and then broken the mirror, now we're going to actually have to format our second mirror and we go in and we can choose whether it's a GUID, which we, you would want to use that if you had larger than two terabyte volumes. Uh, you can choose to format the drive either NTFS or EXT4. EXT4 is a Linux format. NTFS is more of the Windows format. Most of the time our customers will use NTFS. And we're going to do a quick format and since this is going to be mirror set made up of uh, the third and fourth disk, I'm going to just label this volume mirror set 3-4 just so that I can keep track of it later. 
and format that volume. I'm going to confirm, and since I chose a quick format, it'll probably happen fairly quickly, but it does take a bit to format a two terabyte uh, mirrored volume. Now you'll see we have mirror disk zero, mirror disk one, and each one of those is ready to be shared up on our network. Now that the uh, mirror set's created, I want to show you how to share those up. So I'm going to scroll up here and go into Windows Networking. And under Windows Networking, I'm going to enable advanced sharing. I'm going to make sure that uh, there's a user with a password of just password. And what this will do is make my NetSwap Plus a typical NAS device. So I'll share those drives. I'm going to jump back into the disks menu we just left. And for each of those mirror sets we created, I'm going to, uh, you'll notice it says not shared. I'm going to go into its properties and I'm going to tell it to share those drives as a network attached storage. And I'm going to just use the default share name of mirror disk zero here. And I'll do the same thing on mirror disk one. So as soon as mirror disk zero is shared, uh, it's saying not shared. It takes it a minute to get that status. So I'm just not going to worry about that. I'm going to go into the properties and I'm going to go ahead and again share this as mirror disk one and save that. So the idea here is we've created uh, pairs of mirrors between disk one and two and three and four. We've configured Windows networking as a standalone NAS. You can see that the first disk that I did, the first mirror disk, zero, is now showing as shared. And in a minute, if I hit refresh, we'll see that the other one is shared as well. So we got mirror disk one. Now, those are available on our network. And I want to show another interesting feature of mirroring. You'll notice up here under the physical disks, we have disk one and disk two. Do you see where there is a mirror schedule button on disk number two? I'm going to click the mirror schedule button and by default my mirror is continuous. That's what we would expect. I could schedule my mirror to occur every week on Friday night at say uh, oh, 1700 which would be what 5 p.m. and save that. Now if I do that and come back and take a look at the disks I'm going to save that just to make sure I got that thing saved and go look at disks. What we'll now see is that the first mirror disk zero is actually saying degraded. Now, what have I done here? We have a feature called delayed mirroring in this box that allows you to turn the mirroring on Friday night at 5 p.m., mirror the two Hyroli removable drive trays, and once the mirroring is finished, it will drop the second drive back offline again. So this is for taking point in time snapshots. This would be if your user forgot to swap drive two at a point in time, and you wanted to make sure that that mirror had been done once per week and then dropped back offline so that it has that data safely uh, away from where you could have a virus or whether, where a user might accidentally delete a backup job on that volume. So this delayed mirroring is a really cool feature. By the way, you can do this with more than just two disks. I could choose disk one, two, and three. Okay, disk one, two, and three. I could have a conventional continuous mirror between disk one and two and a delayed mirror to disk three so that disk three comes in and picks up that mirror set on Friday nights and has a point in time snapshot in addition to the continuous mirroring that's going on between disk one and two. Uh, the flexibility of mirroring inside this box is way beyond what most people use. In fact, I could take disk one and mirror disk two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight to disk one. So in other words, I can create multiple copies of the mirror and mirror uh, three sets of drives to one mirror, four sets of drive to one mirror, lots of flexibility in this mirroring subsystem. You may have noticed that I have a one bay NetSwap Plus on the desk next to my eight bay. And the reason I've done that is to emphasize uh, a situation where you might want to place those one bay less expensive devices out at remote locations. Take for example, you have one IT guy who's managing eight remote locations. They may be doctor's offices or urgent care locations scattered throughout the community. And 
You want to put a bigger storage device like the NetSwap Plus with eight bays at your hospital. So the way it would work is that you have local appliances backing up the servers in each of those remote locations and you set up what we call replication jobs. And those replication jobs each go to a separate physical drive in your eight bay device. That gives you the security of having separate hard drives as well as a lot of storage for those remote locations. The replication jobs can be enhanced using a technique we call speed seed. And speed seed is where you physically remove a hard drive from the remote location and you install it in the eight bay. That allows you to get your data to the central location much more quickly than just going over the cloud alone. Let's take a look at what those replication jobs might look like. There's uh, three easy steps to set up replication. And what we have to do is on the receiving side, we have to open a port, typically port 873 through our firewall. And then on that interface, what we do is we go create a name for the target drive and we can make it an entire drive or we can create a directory on that drive. There's two more steps on the sending side. What we do is create a remote location. We specify the public IP address on the outside interface of the firewall of the uh, receiving appliance. And then if we want to, we can specify encryption. Uh, you may not need encryption if you've already got a tunnel to the receiving side via the firewalls, but uh, otherwise you can turn that on. And then on the sending side, you just create a name of a job and specify the drive or folder that you want to replicate. And you can do more than one job if you want. To set up a replication job, we come over here to the replication menu. And since the 8-bay NetSwap Plus is going to be a target of the replication, in other words, what I'm going to show is where my remote clinic sends data back to my central hospital, I'm actually going to start by creating a target on this 8-bay NetSwap Plus. And to do that, I click the New button, and I give the target a name, and this will be the hospital, which will indicate that my target is the central location where all data comes back to. I'm going to put a, a username of user and a password of password uh, for the purposes of this demo. And what I'm going to do is tell it that I want to send data to mirror disk set number one. I could choose a folder on mirror disk one. In this case, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to save that target. So what I've created is a target called the hospital. I'm going to put it on the mirror disk set one. So we have redundancy as we've discussed earlier. And now what I'm going to do is open up a separate tab and I'm going to go over to that little box, which happens to be located at 192.168.1.51. Now this is also called a NetSwap Plus, and the interface looks identical, but you'll see that it is a different box. I've set up uh, the internal drive to mirror to the removable drive. You'll also notice that on this box, we only have one terabyte drive instead of, one, uh, instead of the two terabyte drives located in the bigger eight bay. But I've already set up mirroring. And so I've got a mirrored disk called NetSwap Plus. And what I'll do at this point is I'll come into the replication and tell it about the remote location that we created over there called Hospital. So I'm going to create a new um, location called Central Office Hospital. And that thing was located at 192.168.1.50. I'm going to save that, and that'll be a target where the replication job will now go to. Uh, that's the remote location. Now all I need to do is set up an actual job, which I do by clicking on Jobs and saying New. And under New, it asks me what I want to replicate. In this case, the one terabyte NetSwap Plus. I'm going to do the entire drive. I could choose, again, folders, but I'm going to replicate the entire drive. And it wants to know where to send that job, and it's going to go to a remote location. Since I created a target called the Central Office Hospital, I'm going to uh, pick that location and ask the NetSwap Plus to go out and see if it can communicate to the 8-bay. Now, if it can communicate to the 8-bay, what I should see here is that it gets the target called Hospital that I created earlier, I'm going to give it the user name of user and, of course, the password, password. I can click the test button to make sure that these two boxes are fully communicating with one another. And if they are, I should, after a moment, get a message that indicates that they're communicating and that uh, one job sees the other. So it says that it's connected and authenticated. This means that there's going to be an encrypted tunnel between these two boxes. I say OK. 
I can now say next. Now in many cases, I'm going to want to throttle these replication jobs. So I'm going to give this a job name of um, remote clinic to hospital. And in this case, I'm not going to turn compression on. I could go ahead and save a little bit of um, bandwidth by turning on compression. I'm also not going to throttle the connection. The reason you might throttle the connection is if the clinic out at the remote location has very limited, say, a DSL account that has very limited upload speed, what you can find is, is that when you're replicating during the day, your users have the internet go to their knees. So you, you suddenly can't have users using the internet because all the available bandwidth is being taken up by the replication job. So we do allow you to throttle those. We also allow you to schedule it. In this case, the default is every hour we're going to replicate our data up. That's probably a little more frequent than we need for this remote clinic. So I'm going to choose every day, uh, starting at a particular day. And uh, of course, we can choose uh, maybe 1 a.m. in the morning would be 0100. So we finish that, and now the replication job is ready to go. You'll see that the status is that it's never run. At 1 o'clock this morning, it's going to run, run that job and replicate that uh, to my 8-bay. That replication job could take a while if it's a 1 terabyte data that's coming over to the NetSwap Plus 8-bay. But you can use SpeedSeed to speed that up and physically move a drive to the central location. Well, that's it for the 8-bay NetSwap Plus. If you'd like to learn more about the product, go to www.high-rely.com. Thanks for watching.